Hey, what's up, everybody, and welcome to Cruise Book Photos Episode One. Um, let me just uh, explain the premise of the of this uh, series really quickly. Uh, Ask veterans to submit photographs from their time in the Navy that have a significant uh, has has a lot of significance to them and their naval uh, experience. And then we're just gonna do a deep, quick uh, deep dive into the photo. Uh, my name is Adam Herrera. I am a former fire controlman, U.S. Navy, for 10 years. Um, and let me introduce my co-host really quickly. Uh, from Seaman on Film and the Average G.I. Joe podcast, we have Andrew Mattis. Uh, Andrew, why don't you do, give him a quick little bio? Yeah. Uh, I was FC3 Mattis on the USS Donald Cook from... 2003 to 2007, I was at Aegis Computer and Peripherals Tech, and uh, yeah, I did six years, and that was all the, the Navy had for me. Um, from the thanks, Andy. Uh, from the average edge of or yeah, podcast. Uh, let me introduce uh, Josh. Hey, Josh, what's why don't you going on? Our, yeah, uh, I'm doing good. Hey, I did, um, I was an FC three and i did six years and i uh operated the spy 1d radar um but i think i gave more of my uh upper chain of command held than anything else um but uh i don't know i'm excited come on man let's uh cruise photos let's do it um and the final uh, co-host is a former Average Edge Joe alum guest, uh, Mitch Kionis. Hey, Mitch, uh, why don't you give him a little quick bio? Hey, so uh, Tomahawk Fire Controlman. Um, I retired as a chief after doing 20 years and a month in July of 21. Uh, and if I could go back today, I would. <laughs> I like uh, how... When when you ask uh, how long they've been in the navy, like the retirement goes, have to make sure it's like exact the twelve twenty years and one month. I think uh, <laughs> our friend Chris Mashavecki he always says like twenty years and two days or something like that. Yeah, yeah, you know exactly. Um, before I introduce my guest, uh, cruise book photos. Uh, does anybody want to explain what a cruise book is? Cruise book is the basically the year the yearbook. <laughs> equivalent of you know high school grad you know high school elementary whatever um of <clears throat> your time on the ship and it coincides with the deployment so it's um literally the yearbook for the deployment that you went on and everybody that was on board essentially at that time um they generally try to get i think if you make it in like for hump day or something they'll try and get you in the um in the you know photos and everything else um so you you know you were counted so to speak as being there but yeah it's um uh, you know it has each division and you have like the yeah, it's just like a yearbook stuff. yeah it's literally a year i mean literally a just a like yearbook board visits yeah. and all that kind of stuff and all the funny pictures and you know, formal pictures and now, my question is, does every ship do this, or is this a, a few ships do this, or I've, what? So I've like... seen these other places, these other books and stuff, because I, I remember going to the recruiting office, and I guess the recruiters had their their ships ones there. There was like three or four there in the recruiting office. Mitch, you've been on multiple That's... ships. How's it? Yeah, um, every ship that I've ever been on does it. Okay. So, it's just, if you have a good MWR, they'll set it up and take a bunch of pictures and it'll be a good time. It, it definitely uh, reminds you of some good memories and some good people. Awesome. Well, uh, let's get on with the show then. Uh, let me introduce our first guest, uh, Oscar <clears throat> Vera. What's going on, Oscar? Why don't you give everybody a quick bio? Yeah. So my name is Oscar Vera. I was, uh, I'm a retired OSC now. I joined in March of 97, retired of June of 2017. Uh, so, yeah, just like everybody else, right? I did 20 years and three months. So, yeah, you know those dates. <laughs> uh, yeah, so I was on operations special. So I was on board the Donald Cook from September of 05 to December of 2010. 
I left after the Christmas party that we had. Uh, yeah, it was probably uh, one of the best five years I had on board a ship. I obviously, you know, with a lot of people that we keep in touch with. So it was really strong uh, group of uh, people at Rwanda that was uh, really good friends even now, like, damn, like, what, 15 years later and so on. So, yeah. But, yeah, that's kind of my background. So, yeah, I've been retired, been enjoying the civilian life. And, yeah, just like Mitch, man, if I have the opportunity to go back, man, I'll go. No, okay, so I asked you to submit a couple of pictures, and you chose two. Uh, let's start off with this one. Can you guys see that? <laughs> yeah, yeah, uh, man. So that that's crazy. Oscar. Yeah, uh, why don't you tell us why you went with this picture first? Uh, so yeah, this is actually a few days after I graduated boot camp. Uh, you can kind of see the old dungarees and the utility jacket. Uh, my God. And I was like maybe 150 pounds in that picture. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I was actually, yeah, that's in front of the uh, chapel. I believe my my dad took that picture. My family came out to visit. Uh, my oh, mom, my dad. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, it was awesome. Yeah. Like I remember that day like it was yesterday, man. It seems like it just went by so fast, man. And that, that's in 97. So that was a totally different time for what it is now. Um. Yeah, so I guess uh, we could all remember. What I'll start off. What's in your hand? So there's a uh, the base, a uh, little exchange on base. Yeah. So I remember going uh, to the base. I remember getting like a watch. My dad got me like a watch, uh, and just like you know, uh, general stuff like deodorant and whatever else. Because shortly after this, I want to say like the next day or two, I uh, flew out to uh, Damneck, Virginia, for school for a school. So yeah, it was just some little goodies and snacks. <laughs> yep, and a navy hat too, man. <laughs> <laughs> um. So I kind of have uh, a lot <laughs> going through my head. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Oscar, can you explain the significance of the hat? Yeah. So um, when you go in, you get one that says uh, "Recruit." I want to say it's come. Kind of, vaguely kind of remembering uh and after you graduate you, know, you switch over to the navy hat it's basically saying you're a part of the team uh so yeah it meant a lot you know for a lot of people when they make that transition you know you, you don't realize it then but you realize it after the fact you know when you start going into the fleet like the significance of what that means you know to be part of like the navy so that's kind of what it means to me at least uh what year was this uh, that was uh, May of 1997. Um, yeah, so now I'm like uh, comparing my, my boot camp experience to this photo. Uh, what was the uniform of the day for you in boot camp? Or, or is this, obviously this well, those, is after graduation? Yeah, so those are just uh, dungarees, your typical, like the bell-bottom ones, the jean style fit that fit right over the boots, like really comfortable. So yeah, that's what that uniform so was right there. You're, what when did you when when did you uh go in? Ninety seven. So they were still doing the bell bottoms then for, for yeah. Real? I want to say two thousands when they switched over to the other ones. That's great. It looks good. I like the bell bottom look. It was awesome, man. Yeah. <laughs> That's like cool. I remember too. They taught us like the like how to float in them in water. Like mm -hmm. you remember used to like having like right yeah pick them up and up in the water and get some air in there. Catch air in them. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> man, that's cool. Yeah, I want to say I still got a pair in the basement somewhere. You got the I could see you got those BCs on. I, actually, you know what's funny? I actually I still have those. I have them like in a glass case. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> the very those first the, the original. Yeah, the original BCs, man. Those were something else. <clears throat> yeah, I, remember, I got yelled at my. They're uh, more fashionable now. They have more fashion yeah. lenses now yeah. in boot camp, don't they? Yeah, they do from what I hear. Yeah. Like, so it, it, it was funny in boot camp. So I had three uh, RDCs, right? Well, two of them were like first classes, and one of them was an RP2. Or I think it was RP2 Winbush, female. She's like one of those really like strict RDCs. So one day I was uh, walking by her uh, to get something, and I didn't have my glasses on, my BCs. And she's like, Who are you? I'm like, You know, Seaman Recruit Vera. She's like, Don't you wear glasses? <laughs> I was like, Yeah. So she made me go like eight count body. 
But not wearing my damn glasses. It was not wearing your glasses. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Damn it. <laughs> Oh, so, man. Yeah, those are the days. Is that the what is it? The chapel behind you, I guess, the base chapel. Yeah, I, I want to say that was like recently built. Um, it looked brand new when like when I got there. Uh, but yeah, that was the base chapel. We did some stuff in there. Um, I do so remember yeah. going there like once or twice or something. I can't remember. I would go there on Sundays, yeah, and kind of you just going there, not so much for the service, but just to chill out. Yeah, yeah, for did it look the same though for you guys? And it looks a lot yeah. very very similar. Like it was, it was hard to pinpoint at first, but now it's starting to get familiar. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> um man, those bell bottom pants are awesome. I wish I could get a hold of a pair of them, man. Uh, did y'all have, have, did y'all have your names on the back of them like we did with the utility pants? Yeah, so the weird thing about this uniform. That I didn't realize until I got into the fleet, because boot camp everybody's all is uniform, right? But the fleet, when you got to the fleet, my first ship was out of Hawaii. I was on the uh, DD nine nine two Fletcher. So everybody had something different. Somebody that had an iron on crow, uh, either stitched in, or their names stenciled in, or their names uh, with the patches that were actually the sewed in. Yeah. So, that, but there was no uniformity. You know what I'm saying? Like everybody kind of did like their own thing oh. or had their own thing, and it wasn't. You know, like somebody would have like a crossed out chevron if they got in trouble, and that was they were still allowed to wear that. So, yeah, it wasn't like the uniform that came out with afterwards. You think that was because that would have been back before they consolidated boot camp just to Great Lakes? Is that maybe because Uh, we had what San Diego, Orlando, and Great Lakes boot camps? Uh, it could be. I'm not sure what the time frame was for that. It was probably like a few years before I got in here, where they still had one of the other two bases maybe existing. Uh, before yeah. then, yeah, but by this time, yeah, Great Lakes was like the one place to go to. Okay. Um, was this in the era of the true boot camp when you were going through boot camp with the actual boots on? Yeah, yeah man, like it took a while right. to get into those, yeah, break them in and everything. Yeah, I think that was later, like 2005, 2007 time frame. And that when was they started changing that. I don't know, they yeah. were running in tennis shoes, like. A little bit after I left. I remember we would do a little mix. I remember we would run in tennis shoes sometimes and we would run in boots the other times. Yeah, you guys have the new balances? Yeah, yeah I did. Yeah. I went in uh, O2. Yeah. <laughs> um, one other thing I want to point out is uh, the utility jacket looks super comfortable as well. Yeah, it was. Yeah, I did like that. I uh, had like, you know, pockets and everything in there, like, that were really nice. The jacket was like it was a light jacket for the most part. Um, I always enjoyed that utility jacket. It was a nice little. So did yeah, I. But this one, this one looks like a little baggier, a little longer, and uh, yeah, a little more comfortable. I may have lost weight in boot camp. You know how it is. Uh, <laughs> so, that, was, that was that. <laughs> yeah, because it's like the, I think the first few days, man, it was just like it was like anybody else, like nervous away from home for the first time. Um, you know, so like I didn't use a bathroom for like almost a week, man. <laughs> <laughs> Jeez. Um, that's awesome, and I think uh we all kn- something we could relate to, something that was a big you know part of our lives was like that graduating from boot camp is probably for a lot of us is going to be like one of the first big accomplishments of our lives. So I could definitely uh, see why you chose this picture. Um, what about the rest of you guys? You guys any, any more comments? Well, if you recall our last episode that we did together, to piggyback off of what he was saying <laughs> about the Navy ball cap, um, it was like you. Everybody goes to high school for the most part, graduates high school. Like that's expected. Um, not that many people join the military, even less the the Navy. So going from that recruit ball cap to that Navy ball cap is like the first time you really feel like not accomplished, but like you earned it. Like you're, you earned to be part of the team. Like you earned your spot on the roster almost. And, um, and at that point you're just so excited and you're just kind of excited to get out to the fleet because you've heard all these stories and, you know, all these fun times that you're, you're literally just about to embark in. And, um, 
man, getting that ball cap, especially for me, um, we graduated boot camp two days after 9-11. Mm-hmm. So getting that ball cap, man, it, it meant a lot. And, it, you know, the, there wasn't a dry eye in the room. They played like, who is that, Lee Greenwald, Lee <laughs> Greenwald, or, yeah, Greenwald yeah. or something? Proud to be American. Proud to be an American. <laughs> yeah. Bro, let me tell you, man, that hit hard, um, especially during that time frame. So, yeah. so getting that ball cap was, um, I mean, you were exhausted, like, you were lacking oh, sleep. I mean, the next morning after, um, <laughs> it's definitely, it'll definitely go down as a core memory for sure. So, yeah. for the uninitiated, um, you, you transfer the recruit ball cap to the Navy ball cap right after battle stations. So, like, you have, you know, your experience is, you know, 48 hour long process of, you know, where you've, you haven't, you, you've had little to no sleep, you pass it. And then uh, f- for a lot of people, it's also the first time your uh, boot camp instructors, your RDCs, whatever you want to call them, you know, they acknowledge you pretty much as a human being, you know? Well, I think you're <laughs> you referred to as a, sa- like, I think you're referred to as a sailor at that point, right? Yeah. You're, longer yeah. Yeah. you're a sailor. Yep. So like you're you're exhausted. You, the <laughs> your boot camp instructors show you some form of humanity and, and they say, Hey, you're one of us now is is a pretty pretty big deal. For me it was anyways. Yeah. Yeah, huge. Um, so Sorry, I'm just setting it up next for the next one. Well, yeah. I, you know, I, I want to. I, I just want to say something like kind of like this off topic, really, just kind of to uh, compliment Adam and his courage and to do this type of stuff. And like, you know, I always try to say, I always try to live my life by actions, not words. You know, remember, old, remember the old fact of non verba. Yeah. So that's I think that's a good to. saying, but I think Adam really lives that that persona man i think he really does it i think he really gets out and does stuff this is pretty cool i really enjoy doing this sorry i was i just had i just i just i just, I just my brain went off topic and i wanted to say that and thank you and we can get back on talking all sorry. right no i appreciate sorry. that um so oscar you shared us uh maybe one of your first big accomplishes of your career and now your second picture it's kind of like the icing on, on the cake, would you say? Yeah, for sure, definitely. Yeah, that's kind of why, yeah, that's very significant, yeah. So why don't you go ahead and explain the second picture? So this was uh, my retirement ceremony um, that I had at Naval Station Norfolk. Um, so, yeah, this was towards the end of it. You know, you walk to the line, and then you walk, come, come through with your family, and this is just kind of me, you know, like tipping my hat to everybody, you know, just saying thank you. Um, yeah, like that was just like, because I think there, there was like probably like 150, 160 people there. Wow. And a lot of them were from like pretty much from every command with the exception of like boot camp. Yeah, that goes my retirement coin. <laughs> where, was where did you do your ceremony at? It was uh it was at Sewell's Point, I believe. Uh, or no okay. Vista Point. So, Vista Point. Yeah, so was here in Norfolk. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, it, it was just, just the preparation for it and everything, like leading up <clears> to it, because I was over at uh, ATG Norfolk at the time. So I already had in my mind, you know, this is kind of where I was gonna retire. Um and I, you know, I, I did what I, I love doing. I love training, I love traveling, you know, being with the sailors. So I got to do what I loved for like the last three years of my Navy career, man. And like you know, the impact of like this photo, like you don't feel it until like days afterwards, you know, because you're so oh, you're already tuned to doing what you were doing for like 20 years. Like, well, it, yeah, that's how I was going to go is like, I mean, at, even me just serving six years, I was very, I guess I can say scared to get out. Were you the same way? Oh, Were yeah, definitely. Very intimidated. Like, what am I going to do now? I mean, yeah, like right around my 10 year mark, um, I was very scared. Like that's like right around the time I made first class. Um, and I was like, if I made first by that time, I was like, I'm just gonna do the rest of my time in. 
but yeah, it was close. Like I, I was like, you know, like I didn't know what, what was out there. Like I never worked on a resume. Uh, you right. know, I had a few jobs very, before I got Very, very ignorant to the civilian world. That's how I felt too. I very exactly. I felt. I mean, I hate to make that make that comparison. It's like a some a prisoner getting out of prison. You know, trying to adjust <laughs> to the freedom and you know all that stuff that you know you didn't have when you were in the military. You know, yeah. So. Yeah, yeah, right. Because it's it's a very arduous schedule. Like there's, you know, the military that line of work. There's like no schedule like it. You know, just leaving home for like six plus months, and you know, duty days and late days, training, and you know, just a lot of stuff that goes into that. Man, you know, are so you I'm always to, thankful. Are you able to? I mean, have you enjoyed your retirement? Are you able to turn it off? I mean, are you kind of like chilled and relaxed and laid back? Or <laughs> uh, so I'm still. Uh, affiliated. Uh, so my first job out, I took a year off, did some school. Uh, my first job was still uh, Department of Defense. I worked over at Dahlgren, which okay. a lot of you guys probably oh, went there for I school. I love that place. I'm going to yeah. go there and visit. I'm going to go back and visit Dahlgren so bad. It's a lot different, man. <laughs> it's grown up finally. Has it really? Yeah, it's it? like civilization up... now. <laughs> I wouldn't even recognize it. Almost, yeah. Like God, it was a little tiny ass, a little. Pu- I loved being there, though. I loved yeah. that. Was my one of my favorite places to go really oh yeah <laughs> we made it wasn't good too bad. With, we made good friends with our instructors and they all lived on the base we'd go there and drink and okay. fish and you know so you were there for when they had the uh, mean gene oakland bowling alley <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah i remember there being a bowling alley there uh. <laughs> That was a fun time. I really enjoyed it. Anyways, just being, you know, just being from a small town, that was an, that was kind of like, it was kind of like another home, you know, it was like, I can deal with this, you know. Yeah, it was a good area. I worked there for like, for three years. Uh, you know, a lot of the people I worked with lived in that area. So like, I really good friends out there that I still keep in touch with from over there. Like I would have totally but, yeah. went back and instruct there, but. You know, you were saying that you enjoy training. I think I, I really think that a lot of those, re- I think a lot of retired military would be excellent educators. Oh, yeah, no doubt. Yeah. Just because y'all like to see, you know, you like to see fellow human beings succeed at things or challenges, you know. I don't know. Just the way you were talking, I was like, this guy would be a good educator, you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, that's fun. But yeah, now my new job, I work over at the uh, Washington Navy Yard. Still dealing with the DOD. I work with uh, a group. We do um, training systems. Uh, so I'm doing all the analysis stuff. Like they already got a lot of the stuff ready, but for the DDG Flight 3s. So it's kind of cool to see all that new stuff from like, you know, my first ship when yeah. I joined there. It was already like 20 something plus years old. It's like the newer baselines and all this other stuff. So it's interesting to see where the Navy is going. Um, I'd like to come back to this picture. Mm-hmm. Um, obviously there's probably, you know, hundreds of pictures from that day of you and you chose this one, uh, from, for those that aren't looking at it, you're clearly tipping your, your cap to your guests. Yeah. Um, so why did you pick this picture exactly? And, like, uh, what was going through your head and what was the significance of like the tipping of the cap? Oh, uh, so honestly, like, it, it, like, so I'm a big Yankees fan. Uh, so kind of like I like I remember when Jeter retired, right? Mm. Like when he tipped the hat, you know. And to me, that's always been a thing. Like just to say, like right. thank you, like thank you is never enough, right? Like you can never say thank you enough. So sometimes like a gesture or something to like to everybody, it, you know, just that that body language, just to say, you know, like thank you for everything, you know, because like that that's you know I'm, I'm grateful to have my parents around, you know, my uh, brothers and sister, my cousins my Navy friends and other people that I, you know, I met in Virginia beach and Norfolk while I was out there to be there and to have that, that moment. It's just like, how do you say thank you? You know what I'm saying? So that, like, that's the only thing I could think of at that particular time. But I, I correlate that with, like you said, Derek G, just like the tip of the hats, like the whole crowd. And yeah. Um, How involved hey. into your own, sorry. Uh, how involved into your own retirement ceremony are you actually, or the you know, do you have like a, a best man that does it <laughs> kind of yeah. like a wedding or something? Yeah. It's like, you have like your, uh, the coordinator I had two, two of my good friends, uh, that, that did it for me. So we did it, but we all 
kind of like grouped together. Uh, so yeah, they did a lot of the footwork, you know, I, I did the reservation for the place. They scoped it out. You know, we mm. talked to other people like the chaplain getting the scripts ready. So it's like a whole like script, like the book itself, like it probably fits in like a one inch binder, but everything's like scripted. So you don't miss anything. Um, so yeah, it's, it's pretty much detail, but you know, being there at ETG, it's a very senior command. So you always have templates from somebody else that you could use. And that's kind of what I did. I made everything mm. kind of obviously tailored to me. Um, but yeah, but with that, that definitely helps out a lot. So you're doing it from scratch. It's a lot, you know, so, but yeah, I was thankful for that. Did you graduate? I mean, you graduated. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> you retired chief, senior chief. Yeah. Just chief. Oh, chief. Yeah. The chief uniform is sharp. It's sharp looking. Like I know the, sharp picture, as hell. the picture I see is from the back, but I can see where the shirt is very tailored. So I know it yeah. looks pretty good on you. That was probably the. Right. Second or third time I ever wore that uniform. Yeah, I was gonna say three hundred dollar uniform you wear twice. <laughs> yeah. uh, what is that? Is that? It, well, it's not the Joker short, whites, though. is it? Is or which one is that? Yes, yeah, yeah. Jokers. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, those always look really good. Yeah, yeah, those are sharp. Yeah. Well, I know I slept better at night knowing that you were still in, you know, doing doing <laughs> doing the Navy thing while I was over here. Had to watch, if you will. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, family wise, uh, who attended? Uh, so my mother, father, brother, sister, nephews, nieces. Um, I was married at the time, so my ex wife, uh, our daughter, uh, she was pregnant with our son at the time. He was born, uh, September of that year. Uh, and just, you know, my sister's in-laws, you know, friends from uh, different commands. Uh, there was there was like a, a, a guy that I bet. So I used to go to Kosama Gym in Virginia Beach. You know, I got really close with them. I, inv I invited them over so that he was there with his wife. So, you know, and that's what I've always liked. I've always enjoyed um, just being in other people's culture or surroundings, you know, just like especially like more to traveling overseas you know I, you don't I get agree. to experience I that agree. i miss that too i miss that yeah. so much too just enjoying yeah. or even the experience other people's cultures other people's lifestyles exactly yeah and that's why like, i always talk to my neighbors too like i want to know like my neighbors i want them to get to know me because before i was i pretty much kept to myself until i joined the navy like i didn't drink before i came in the navy so <laughs> you know, i didn't party like i did when i was in the navy so yeah a lot of things came out of that Um, I also want to know, so, you know, you're having this ceremony celebrating the 20 years of your, the past 20 years of your, your life, essentially, you know, there's people up there speaking on your behalf, saying what a solid guy were you, um, through this whole ceremony process, like what kind of things were you thinking about? Were you thinking about, you know, the, the last 20 years, were you thinking about, yeah, if, if I may interject, did it seem like twenty years? I guess is is a is a good question. No, it, it never does, man. Like when you when you when you're in for that long, like and you think about it, like it's a blink of an eye. Like when you're in it, in it, like when you're on those duty days or when you're on deployment or underway, like it seems long, right? But when it comes to that that time, it's like damn, it went by so fast. You know, like I don't. And to tell you the truth, I don't know. I wasn't really thinking that like much because I like before I, I retired, like I said, I was working at ATG and there was a lot of retired people that worked there too. And the guy was like, Hey, you should, you know, write your stuff down. But I didn't write anything down. Like I just went, I spoke from my heart as best as I could, like just remembering everything. Um, and that's the kind of way I've always been. I wouldn't say I'm a, a procrastinator, but <laughs> <laughs> I, I, when I, when I'm pushed against the wall, that's, that's kind of when I do my best work. Right. And that's kind of, I, I just spoke from the heart uh, that day. Um and, but like I said, it doesn't hit you until like after the fact, like I, I, in a in a sense, because um, you, 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 we've been members of uh, retirements. So you kind of have that both side view, you know, people there, they want to have a good time and, you know, hang out afterwards and meet. So I was kind of having that in the back of my mind, too. You know, I wanted to like mingle, eat food with people. And, you know, that's when it really starts to sink in. Like, you know, like right. a lot of these people you weren't going to see. That was probably going to be the last time. Um, but yeah, like I, I, I was just, uh, I don't think I was nervous. I wasn't scared. I, I just kind of like went through the motions 
trying to hit all everything milestones uh throughout my life and my career and the people that you know were there for me i feel like they should do like retirements at like great lakes for the kids getting in you know like just being like okay i want to tell you my story real quick or something you know like stay in you know (laughs) yeah right (laughs) that's cool man that's really freaking cool yeah yeah, it's crazy to you. Sorry, go ahead. No, I was just gonna say like the the military time and like civilian time, like you know, 2017 till now, like that time just flew by like that, you know. Oh yeah. So it's a huge difference. What do you miss the most? What do you miss the most? Do you miss? I mean, I won't even say camaraderie. I always miss. I still miss that. But do you miss? You know, having breakfast every day at the same time, or do you miss having a chow at the same time every day? Or and I, so you know, it's interesting. Like, so I the one thing I do miss, honestly, like, so I remember like just being underway, and sometimes just like walking through the P ways or something, or even like on duty days, and just knowing like all the different things that were happening on that ship. You know, like I, I would hang out in some different spaces sometimes. You know, people would be playing like video games here, right? Or just you know, like those little things, like you know, like. That's that's what I miss miss the most, you know. And of course, that culminates too with the time with you, you know the people you met, your friends, and that time that you know you share together. You know that's that's like, you know, it's like another no other field, you know, just in the military. That, that time that that you get to spend pretty much like twenty four seven essentially with, uh, especially on a small ship, you know, like three hundred people or whatever. So you get to know people very intimately. All right, we got another picture. What do you got, Adam? I don't know. Yeah, that was, that was pretty much the beginning and the end right there. <laughs> yeah, no, it's perfect. Uh, perfect two pictures to summarize. <laughs> yeah, really. yeah, that's pretty all wild. The, all the other ones are being passed out somewhere. Yeah. <laughs> so what are you gonna do? What are you doing? So you're saying so you're you're working DOD right now and all that fun stuff. Contractor, I guess, and. Yeah, contractor uh, to work at the Navy Yard. The guys I work for, government guys, they're, again, retired military people. So it's like you already have that common ground, you know, like right. that understanding. So that, that makes it more enjoyable to be around those people and just to go to work, too. So, yeah, I, I definitely enjoy my job. So you were an OS. So like I, like I, was, you know, I know OSs are very diverse. I mean, I remember OS is being up on the bridge. I remember OS is being down the, in the uh, in combat. I remember OS. You said there was OS is out possibly standing watch. Mm-hmm. What was your favorite job as an OS or favorite duty as an OS? I guess. Oh, uh, so two that really stood out. A watch y'all, supervisor. Y'all, OS has got to draw the ships, right? Am I no no? After what? Did they get to draw the ship? That's quartermasters. That was the quartermasters. Okay. Yeah, QMs. Yeah. <laughs> I thought uh, I remember being in the Navy or something. <laughs> do you have do you remember something that you remember like, I love doing this? this is fine. <laughs> uh so one thing I, I will say, uh going back to what we do. So yeah, pretty much OS were involved in every warfare area. So you got an OS, you know, it's uh Tomahawk FCs, yeah, absolutely. Uh surface warfare, there's OS involved with harpoon, uh air controllers, right? Your AICs, your Aztecs. Uh, your warfare commanders, uh, SWIC or AIR, uh, you know, your link coordinators with your TIC, uh, you know, your navigation team, RADNAV. So, yeah, we were just everywhere, like NSFS or NGSF. You know, we were involved with that with the guns. So, yeah, we were just a part of everything. And that's kind of what I liked about my job. But I think overall, so the first one was the watch supervisor, because by that time, right, you weren't really rotating through the stations. You're just kind of managing people at that time. So that was good. The flip side of that was a port and starboard. Now, but that just, oh man, that, that like when I say that, I just feel tired already, right? Because oh, you God. lose sleep, everything. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but yeah, and also just being, I was a warfare coordinator, so I sat swig. So just being in three sections was just like, I felt bad, you know, because I was in three sections and, you know, my guys were port and starboard. So, but, you know, that's just how the watch bill worked. I think a lot of that has changed now. I don't know about you, Mitch, but has that changed as far as like, Three sections now. Is that like pretty much all ships um, now? It just depends on what command you're with. So okay. I know for me, towards the end of my career, I did a strike group and then I went to shore duty in Italy. Mm-hmm. Um, so my when I was with strike group, my deployments were with a carrier, 
And okay. there's literally four of us. I got or five of us. I got an OS um that'll come and sit watch with us. I got an ET assigned to us and then some some chiefs in our first class. Okay. So on the ship we we're launch area coordinators. And then when I was in Italy, I was a Tomahawk strike coordinator off the uh, USS Mount Whitney. So okay. for those environments, I was running like 18 hour days, you know, oh, wow. 18. And then uh, I'd go down to sleep and somebody else would step in. You know, yeah. you can go eat, you can go to the gym real quick, take a shower, do your like chores or uh, quals. Um, yeah. But for the most part, you're, you're kind of stuck in there. Yeah. And also like evolutions, like OS, we were like any, like dealing with RAS. Like, you know, so we're coordinating over fleet tech or, you know, working our station to get to the back of the ship. We're involved, you know, with that. PO operations, small boat operations, you know, so it's, it's just so much encompassing. Like, that's kind of one of the things that got me, like, when I went to uh, my recruiter, because the OS on paper looked really cool <laughs> until you get to the ship as, like, a seaman recruit, right? Because now you got a dustpan and a foxtail. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, but then you learn your way, you know, I was uh, – grateful and uh, thankfully uh, to be on an older ship so i had to learn like a lot of stuff like you know logging uh you know contacts or writing in like a, the watch the cic watch log uh you know just things like that or using the drt uh trace or sitting on a spot 25 so i got to learn a lot before i got to the donald cook because donald cook everything you know that's a newer ship modern so, ship, yeah more modern yeah ship. exactly so i walk in i'm like damn and my first underway i'm like you know how come nobody's sitting on a spot 25 how come the, nobody's sitting on a DRT? Because those were manned stations on our ship. Like every three minutes, we we're following that little bug with the little pencil, right? Marking it, drawing out the P. So the computer would just do that, I guess, or whatever. On the, the newer ones, uh, it's, it still works, operates the same. It's just uh, digital now, DDRT, but now they have the KDAR, which is a computer assisted dead reckoning trace. So, yeah, it's, it's advanced. <laughs> <laughs> Sweet. Well, unless anybody has anything else, uh, I just want to thank you, Oscar, for sharing those two pictures on this uh, first episode of uh, Cruise Book Photos, episode one. Um, if you're watch or listening to this on Spotify, I suggest you head over to our YouTube page and check out the video. And if it, if you're watching this on YouTube, I suggest heading over to one of your favorite podcasting streaming sites and listen to our Average Jet Joe podcast where you get a bunch of cool content, uh, interviews from your everyday veterans, uh, hear their life stories, you know, because uh, everybody has a story to tell. And then I just want to get it out there. Um, with that being said, if you're veteran you know active duty veteran and you have uh pictures photos that uh, commemorate a, sp a very special time here josh is hella distracting me right now <laughs> <laughs> uh if you're active duty vet or veteran and you have uh, pictures <laughs> to signify uh special moments of your military career feel free to reach out to us average gi joe pod at gmail.com uh, send us in some photos give us a little reasoning why you chose those photos and maybe we could get you on and uh, do a deep dive into your own personal photos uh, does anybody have anything else they want to put out no you know while you're on Spotify though hit up that uh, the average G.I. Joe playlist too uh, it's a playlist uh, filled with songs recommended by our past interviewees <laughs> uh, well, I gotta check that out Sorry, I remember the song. <laughs> Pretty funny. Uh, thank you, Josh. Thank you, Oscar. Thank you, Mitch. And thank you, Andy. You know, I picked up the phone thank that you, you guys welcome. answered. And uh, that's a testament of, to uh, the camaraderie and the bonds that we built. So I just want to thank you guys for joining me on this first episode. Awesome. Thank you, man. I appreciate yeah, it. Definitely. Uh, say goodnight, everybody. All, All right, right, guys. Appreciate it.